Today I am going to work on a project using my fused cereal bag with scraps in between which I showed on another video. And I'm just going to kind of put together an art journal page and this is an experiment. Let's just see how it works out, what looks best underneath, what works on top, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, I'm going to I'm going to put it right here. I need me some wax paper. This is a actually a, a drawing a sketchbook not an art journal, so it has really thin paper. Do I care? No, I don't. <laughs> Works just fine. Okay, let's do that. I have chosen three colors of paint. You know, you just can't go wrong with some shade of red, some shade of yellow, some shade of blue. So I've got craft paints and a deep red, a butterscotch, and a dark turquoise. That's what I'm going to use. I need me a paintbrush. I'm just going to squirt out a little bit of each. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay down a little color. Then I'm going to lay down a little texture and pattern. And then I'm probably going to lay down a little more color after that. wet brush and let's just work on precise you know placement and techniques right Okay, we've got some color down there, so now let's put some, uh, I'm thinking book pages. Here's, here's my thinking here. This, even though there's not very many scraps here, it's still kind of busy because, you know, they're all different shapes and sizes and colors and directions and there's just a lot going on. So, if what I have underneath here is also real busy, these are just going to blend in and you're not going to be able to see the scraps. So I'm thinking maybe if I use some book page scraps, maybe two is all I need. See, then I get the little bit of color and I get the um, book page uh, plainness that helps the scraps to show up. So you can kind of kind of see the difference there. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Well, I can. You just have to trust me on that. I, oh, I set that in water. Whoops. Okay. Let's glue these on. Do I want them like that? Maybe I do. I think I do. They just kind of that's where they landed, and I'm liking it, so let's go with it. Uh, I've got Mod Podge handy, so that's what I'm using. Okay. Okay. Looks good. Test that out. Looks pretty good. I think I want to add more color around the edges. My same three, the holy trinity of first grade artists. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, it works. It's not complicated. I'm loving it. All right. Okay, good enough. I'm 
Now I want that to dry really well and I don't want to waste that paint. So pull out my little brush cleaner book and that's still good I was afraid I might have overdone it with the extra paint but no I still got I still got ticks showing okay gluing this down I want something clear and sticky maybe if I just use this is usually pretty darn sticky let me try this it's not clear it's white it dries clear but waiting for glue to dry that is sealed underneath plastic <laughs> is, is what you call excruciating. So I'm going to put this on with a card. Maybe if I put it on thin, it will work. Pretty good already, which is a good sign. And this is something where, you know, you really can't use your heat gun. You can, but you have to use it very carefully to speed up the drying time, because weird things can happen. In fact, um, if you do use your heat gun, sometimes those weird things can be cool things, because you can melt little holes in your plastic which can look a little cool, but it can also make a skin on your glue and uh, which will be white and sometimes it will dry clear, sometimes it stays white. I've had Mod Podge do that and it stayed white forever and that really made me mad, but I think it was more of a user error than a Mod Podge problem. I'm going to need a no stick something to press down. Get one of my Non-stick pages. Kind of help press it down into the glue and so they bond with one another. Okay, that is actually stuck down pretty well. I'm surprised. Um, that's not bad. Okay, I have probably fused this to the... Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Oh. I've got... Oh, no, that's that. That's right. That's okay. We're good. It's all good. Don't panic. I got it. Okay, because this is this is an experiment session, right? There. See? Alright. Jeez. God, y'all got all panicky for nothing. <laughs> okay, maybe I panicked just a little. <laughs> okay. This is um really kind of cool. As it is. <laughs> um, and I'm laughing because I'm surprised that it turned out. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's awesome. You get the the painted, you know, background with the uh, book text for some pops of interest. You get the fun little random scrap bits, and then the plastic just adds the most awesome texture. Um, 
and then just the look of it and the glue that I use seems to work really well. You saw me spread it uh, you know, straight from the bottle, but spread it really thin. This is very similar to Aline's Tacky Glue. So I would recommend using, you know, you don't have to use this exact thing, but a thick uh, glue similar to Tacky Glue. That seemed to be good. Spread it really thin and almost to where it's looking like it's drying, you know, and then quickly slap your paper on there, press it down, and then use your heat gun and a piece of parchment or something nonstick to just press it in because the heat gun what it does it kind of it dries the glue and it melts the glue if that makes any sense at all um, if you put a blob of glue out here and heat it with your heat gun you can tell what I'm talking about because um, you know if you smooth it out it will start to dry the glue but if you touch the glue as it's drying while it's still warm it's very very sticky so that heating it makes it uh, tack up as it dries it. So that's, that's why you do this as you're heating because you want to take advantage of that super tackiness that the heat creates. See? See? Science. Kinda. Or I discovered that by accident one day. <laughs> okay. Um, now what? <laughs> See, this is where, this is why I don't make a lot of journal pages. To me, this is finished. I love this. This, this is just happy. Um, there's that part of me that says, no, you're supposed to put something on top. You know, you need a focal image and a sentiment or something. And that it just really irritates me that I have that mindset. I usually ignore that mindset. I'm going to ignore it today because I like this. But, um, yeah, I do sometimes have to train myself, retrain myself out of it. You know, this is their story of my life. All right. So, good shape. I am very happy. This is just my little see what happens, play in it and see what happens journal. I have a video for how I did this. Um, I have a video for this. This was Mary's uh, first mystery challenge. And y'all, I have, you would not believe what I have put this page through on the back side. I mean, this, the back side page, it was layers and layers of glue and heat and paint and trying to figure out what I'm doing and this page held up really well through the whole thing. I am major impressed. Nothing stuck when I was heating this side so yeah, cool. Um, yeah, that was my experiment, first experiment with my fused cereal bag and, and it's completely hidden underneath because I didn't like what I did. And then my next experiment. Oh, see now that I look from here and here to here, now this needs something else. It's hazy. It needs to be brightened up. And it's going to be hazy because the cereal bags are kind of milky. You know, they're not completely clear. So, what can I do to pop that out? I'm wondering, maybe I just need to add a little something sparkly or shiny. Twinkle toes? Can you twinkle toe on plastic? Well, instinct tells me no. You can't you can't watercolor on a slick plastic. So let's prove instinct wrong. Uh maybe if I kind of follow some of the other colors I've already put on there. See, I've got that kind of yellow right there. So let's twinkle to a little orange over that. See, this way I won't lose my transparency, but maybe I can add some color. Now, I could do like a clear gesso over here and then watercolor on it or whatever. I don't want to do that. Uh, that's just a lot of trouble for me. And and this I want to be kind of carefree and organic and, you know, not a seriously thought out, okay, first let's gesso, then let's add some texture. No. 
<laughs> that just it irritates me just thinking about it. So I'm just gonna do my usual. Uh, no, okay. See, I didn't get enough glue right there. I thought it was peeling up. It's not. I just need to put some extra glue there. Let's do some dark blue. Wrong shade. Wrong shade. This one. Yes. Okay. That is just a little bit of color all over. You know, beat it up on plastic as expected. I wonder if we um, wet it, I mean, heat it. Will that do anything? I don't know. Let's find out. You heat it a little bit and then redistribute it. Uh huh. I hope you can tell. That really, um, it really kind of brought out the colors. It didn't so much as add color as it just kind of enhanced what was there. And I kind of like it. And I'm kind of wondering what would happen if I just go one step too far. <laughs> you know? Because, <laughs> yeah, it's really great right now, so let's take it one step too far. <laughs> I love this green. To me, lime green like this is a neutral. It's one of those colors that you add and, you know, it doesn't blend well with every color, clearly, as it's over here in the red, but it goes uh, side by side with every color. I mean, there are just very few colors that you put lime green next to and you go, mm, or at least for me. To me, they always just look so much better. This plastic is holding up surprisingly well. Not all of them will. Some of them will melt if you repeatedly heat them like I'm doing. So keep that in mind. Um, it's just going to depend on your plastic. You just have to play around and uh, try different ones and see, see what happens, see what you like. Blue. I want some hot pink or something right there. Oh, that's nice. Let's do that down here too. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Gonna put a little dab of glue under here before I forget. Take that, all you naysayers who said, you can't watercolor on plastic. Well, I just did, sort of. <laughs> all right, I like that. That really um, brought out the color more. I'm going to do what I did before and, you know, look at the previous two pages and then see if I still feel the same way about that one. Okay, yes, that one turned out lovely. I truly do love this page and Mary's whole process for making it happen. This one was a disaster that got saved and I really do like the way it turned out. Oh, I'm liking it. It doesn't have the bright pop that the others do, but it does have um, good color and it that the watercolor reduced that haziness that was bothering me, that uh, frosted effect from the plastic. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll put some pictures at the end so you can see. Now, um, y'all take your fused cereal bag pieces and make something and then show me how I should have done this. <laughs> 
or show me a new way to do it or or something fun or different you know I, I want to pick through your brain okay that's it for now the end mm -hmm.